member at St James Church across the road for 20 years, so I've been here a lot. And I got interested in the local history here, and railway history particularly, uh, about 25 years ago. We hear a lot about railways in the news at the moment, something called High Speed 2. Don't we? Whether you like it or not, I'm not going to talk about High Speed 2 tonight. But one of the things that I noticed that uh, David Cameron, the Prime Minister, said was, why not build High Speed 2? We don't want a Victorian railway. We don't want to build a Victorian railway. And I immediately thought, why not? They were great. <laughs> the Victorians built some wonderful things that changed the landscape and our society. So I've actually called this uh, talk, if I can get it to go forward, Practice. I'm pressing OK. I'm pressing forward. And I'm pressing right click. Uh, this is a brand new projector, as I said, so please bear with us. No, that's just moving it off the screen. That's not too bad. So I call this talk, or have you had a railway, or low speed one? <laughs> and it's amazing when you talk to people around Audley, the railway has been gone for 50 years. Lots of people know that Audley has a nice flat walk or cycle ride from Bignall End to Halmer End, but the vast majority of people don't know that Audley had a railway there. Now I'm pressing the same button again. So, Audley waited many years for its railway. So I want to take you right back to way before cars, way before railways, back to the age of the canals and primitive horse-drawn transport. There were lots of very primitive tramways built around this area because it was a boom area for mining coal and ironstone for the formative industries at that time. All those <coughs> small individual tubs of coal were pushed by hand or hauled by a single horse. <clears throat> so there are examples built in around this area to link collieries like Bunkers Hill Colliery and ironworks that they served down to the Trenton Mersey Canal which had opened in 1777. So one early scheme for a railway which was the latest technology to reduce friction enable you to carry more goods by pu pulling them with a single horse by laying rails with guide, guide edges and smooth cast iron wheels, was proposed in 1806 for a tramway from the coal mines and the ironworks at Newcastle to the Chester Canal at Northwich to supply coal to the salt industry. So from the collieries and uh, the ironworks producing uh, iron there up to their major market for the salt industry. And one line from the Newcastle Canal and the other from the Apedale Canal would have joined a mile southwest of Audley. So if it had been built, the bottom line is missing. It's interesting to speculate that actually Audley could have been crew because uh, it would have been a major railway junction at that time for a primitive railway. Not sure whether you like crew or not. I prefer Audley the way it is. What really changed the landscape were the first intercity railways. The 1806 tramway was never built. The idea was dormant for 20 years until the technology changed. Because the world's first public steam haul line with steam locomotives was opened in 1825 between Stockton and Darlington, the first intercity railway. The first, the first intercity railway was the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, opened five years later in 1830. And so suddenly everybody sat up and take, took notice. Canals were old hat. The railway was the new thing. The Grand 
Grand Junction Railway was the closest that Audley got at that time to an intercity railway. It was built from Birmingham to Warrington and included stations at towns along its route. But the Potteries towns didn't particularly want this new technology. So the station that was provided for those towns and for Newcastle's iron and coal based industry was at Whitmore on what we now call the West Coast Main Line. You can still see the remains of the station there today. And so suddenly the focus for horse-drawn carriages and carts and all that kind of thing became Whitmore to get traffic onto the railway from 1837. And then the link to London opened in 1838. And suddenly everybody wanted to then connect to these lines so they didn't have to take goods by horse and cart to a railhead like Whitmore, which as you can know is quite a step away, especially if you don't go a horse or you're walking. Um, they wanted to build connecting lines. This led to the railway mania of the 1840s. One of many things opened the public's imagination to travelling by train. One was that in June 1842, Queen Victoria decided that one would travel by train. She travelled on the Great Western Railway and suddenly it became the thing to do. Of course, it hadn't been that long since the medical profession had been advising people that if a human being travelled faster than a galloping horse, your head would explode. <laughs> so this was still quite risky. Your grandparents would have told you not to do it. So in January 1835, a group of local businessmen decided that they wanted a railway network of their own like they'd seen between Liverpool and Manchester, and as was being built steadily northwards. So led by Heathcote, they commissioned George Stevenson, the most eminent, they went to the, the, the top man um, <coughs> to design and repair a railway for the potteries. George Stevenson didn't only design locomotives, he designed railway networks. He didn't actually design any branch lines, but he drew up the basics of the system that became the North Staffordshire Railway. So we owe it to George Stevenson for the arrangement of lines that we have pretty much today in this area, centred around Stoke. The North Staffordshire Railway was quite unusual like that in that it wasn't an intercity railway. It was a railway around an emerging city. It was by the, built by the people of the potteries for the people of the potteries to be able to send their goods out. It wasn't to link two cities particularly was to access the, the railway network around, and it remained like that throughout its existence. The necessary Acts of Parliament were passed in 1846. Part of the initial um, <coughs> network was uh, opened up um, from Stoke Station southwards in uh, 1848, and it was only when the Harecastle tunnels were built that uh, the full network came into use. Part of that initial network was the line which went to, I'm still trying to get this to work, was the line from Stoke via Harecastle, what we now call Kidsgrove Station, north of the Harecastle Tunnels, across to Crewe. So that meant that the nearest station now for Audley was Alsager. <laughs> so people were needed to transport their goods or travel by horse to Alsager to, to service the railway. So lots of local industrialists wanted to link up their industries to the new network. And they got quite impatient about it because the ideas for a grand uh, potteries-based uh, railway network were taking quite a long time to happen. So Thomas Fernstone, who was a lessee to Lord Crewe, and he was working the uh, collieries and ironworks at Maybe Heath, he very quickly built his own locomotive worked mineral branch line which was, if not the first, then one of the, uh, the, 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 then one of the first in the world. From its collieries, from, uh, Lisa, uh, and maybe he, down to the new Grand Junction Railway Station at Maidley. Ralph Sneed was impatient for rail links for his businesses at Lakedale and Silverdale, and he realised that you didn't need Acts of Parliament uh, and the um, pressure by your MPs and so on, and uh, compulsory purchase of land, <laughs> to build a railway line if you owned the land in the first place, which he owned rather a lot. So he just decided to build his own railway on his own land. As long as you didn't cross a public road, you could build a railway wherever you wanted. So he built his own railway down from Aikdown to Silverdale, but he had to stop short of the roads that pulled down. So everything had to be picked up off the railway and carted 
um, across to the canal, the Newcastle Canal, which terminated at Pull Down, just where home base is now. So very labour intensive. And that is a picture in Newcastle Museum. It hasn't come out very well. Uh, it was on the stairwell, I think it still is, um, which is a very rare picture of a very early railway. That is Ralph Sneed's railway, with a very curious looking steam locomotive hauling a train just outside Silverdale with the church on the left. Obviously, there was no photography in those days, so images of those very early railways are very rare indeed. Start talking about the next slide, but I can't remember what it is. Is it a distance thing? You need to move it closer. Railway, once it had built its network, it took over Ralph Sneed's line to Silverdale and it built a new freight line up to Apedale in 1853. But it still wasn't getting very close to Audley. There were collieries in the area which were, which were desperate to have a railway because they were limiting their competitive edge. People were shipping coal much cheaper than they could in horses and carts. So there was a long delay as various schemes battled over territory in this area. Audley was a frontier. There is an article about Audley's railways called Battles at the Frontier. Um, and uh, there were proposed railways which included Altsager and Audley in 1856. The North Staffordshire Railway, having created this patch, it called its own, it tried to keep out rival companies which wanted to tap the traffic from the collieries in particular. The Shrewsbury and Potteries Junction Railway, the Great Western Railway, and they uh, were trying to come up from the west and to try and combat takeover bids by the London and North Western Railway base of Crewe. Eventually, a large scheme for six new freight lines won, and it was called, very unimaginatively, the North Staffordshire Railway New Works Act of 1864. 